Welcome to the Climate Viewer tutorial. This is available at climateviewer.org free of charge. You'll first be greeted by a pop up. It'll have information like the newest maps published. The instruction video you're watching now will appear here. And the latest updates to the software will be here. So just hit I agree to be nosy or close that out and then follow the flashing lights. So we're gonna click on map list and this will show your active maps window. On there is a base map chooser which allows you to choose things like a satellite view or the ocean view you know, bottom of the oceans and stuff like that. So we're gonna put that back to black for now. And we're gonna go over here to add maps. Now this is shows all the map categories. They are listed below. If you want to, you can click show all, and that will show you all 523 maps on Climate Viewer Mobile. And you can do things like search for heart. And as you type, it'll re refine the results. And then you can either click on load map or right here on the title, and that'll load the map up. Or you can click description to go to a page that's specifically designed for just that map alone. So we're going to go ahead and load that up, and I'm going to hit close and that's going to bring it up on there. Now we want to see this with the satellite view so we can actually see what it looks like. There we go. When you click on the icons, it's going to pop up a window on the side which gives you information on the topic and you just close that by hitting X up here. There are three different types of maps on Climate Viewer Mobile and Climate Viewer 3D. So I'm going to go Live Alerts and Weather, rain and snow, and I'm gonna remove the word harp because if I don't, it's still filtering. So then we go down and as you see, when you click a subcategory, it'll actually show you previews of what all the maps look like. So I'm gonna click on next or add radar. And then we're gonna load up one more example. We're gonna click on NASA, Gibbs, satellites, and visual. So that's gonna come up here. And what we end up with is this. So we've got NASA radar loaded on top of the heart map all at the same time. So the three different types of maps, some of them are points like we have here. And these are a list of all the markers that are available and you can fly to each location. Then you have a opacity slider on the next rad radar, which makes it partially visible. And then finally on the NASA layers, you have the exact same opacity slider, but you also have a date chooser. So over here is the navigation plus and minus, and then a little home icon. Home will bring you back to the good old US of A. And you click on the date chooser and you can actually change the date of the imagery going all the way back to 2001 on this one in particular, or 2002. So you can go back to the very first image that they have available. And as you zoom in, these will refine themselves to very sharp images. So that's how this works. And as you can see, there are three different types of layers, point layers, overlays, and then the NASA layers have a date chooser on them. So following the flashing lights, I'm gonna hit the little minus right here. And then I can either go to full screen maps and click on 3D here, or I can just hit switch to 3D globe. When I do that, I'm greeted by the exact same type of pop-up that says that if this map does not load, please try our mobile map because this map requires WebGL. So if you don't have a WebGL browser, if you don't have a 3D video card, uh, Climate Viewer 3D will not work. That's why Climate Viewer Mobile is available at the front page of climateviewer.org. And this one is available at climateviewer.org slash 3D. Now, this one is my baby. I think it's absolutely beautiful and it is in 3D. You can rotate it with your middle mouse button. Of course, it has the same buttons over here on the side to zoom in and out. The main difference between Climate Viewer Mobile and Climate Viewer 3D is there's some additional features in here. Like when you come to the base globe chooser, there is also 3D terrain. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on and we're gonna turn it on ESRI aerial. And what we'll do is we'll load up another example. So I'm gonna go to fires and volcanoes and we're going to click on that and we'll show you one other example after this. So once I go to that, I can actually go to each volcano and scroll out of here and then see it in 3D. We're going to go and show another example under other satellites, Sims Mimic. These are the microwave image animations. So when you click on these, what you're going to see is that 
once this pops up, it's going to bring up the timeline control at the bottom. The timeline control is controlled by this little clock icon. So you can get rid of it. You can make it view. But you can actually grab the slider here and animate it. So this is another feature that's only available in Climate Viewer 3D. Um, if you do the exact same thing over on Climate Viewer Mobile, you will get a single static image, but the 3D version has the animation controls built in. So the buttons right here, you have an eyeball icon. If you click that, it actually toggles it off. So it makes it disappear, but it leaves it in your active maps list. You can click it again to load it right back up, or you can click the X underneath it to get rid of just that one. If you wanted to clear all of your active maps, you click the trash can icon right here. You can also turn on the sunlight by clicking here and it'll show where day and night is currently. You can watch the sun go around. And I'm gonna turn that off now, turn that off. Let's say I want to go and look at this volcano and I wanted to share the location of this. If you hit share screen, it'll actually give you a link that will load up the map currently on the screen and share the screen location. So that's a pretty cool feature there. It's a great way to mix maps together. So let's give an example. If I go add maps and I come up here to the very top and I click on pollution and privacy, atmospheric sensors, I can load up ELF, VLF, ionospheric heaters, um, and missile defense radars all at the same time. And that'll give me a map that looks something like this. So after you've loaded all these up, you can click the share screen icon and it'll give you a link that you can uh, share with other people that will uh, bring up all of the layers you currently have loaded and your screen's location. So you can copy that or I just hit go to. And what you'll see is that it'll automatically pop up the screen with the same layers already loaded in the same location. Very cool feature. And the only button left on here is the little information for icon button right here. It is also available in the add map section right here where it says description. If you click on description, it'll take you to a page that's devoted simply to that map and it has more information about the map below. And what it'll say is who made it, what type of map it is, you can download the original source, and sometimes it has a more information link here. The map works exactly like the main mobile map, except it's devoted simply to that individual map so you can share just this page. It has the map controls where you can fly around to each location and it has the same base map chooser on it like so. So you can flip from that to the 3D globe just like on the front page and click map controls and fly to the individual locations just like you do on the front page and it looks like this. And you can see that in 3D. Pretty freaking cool. The rest of the stuff on the website, we have something called the Earth Monitor. You can bring this up. This is links to other maps around the world. At the very top is Climate Viewer Reports. You can submit reports by clicking on either of those. We have things like Global Incident Map, Earthquake Maps, Flight Tracking. You can click on that. It's going to bring a pop-up and bring up all the flights in the world. If you close that, just click the X down at the bottom. We have uh, Satellite Tracking, which shows every satellite in orbit, as well as space junk. There's also things like marine traffic, ship tracking down here at the bottom, where you can click on that and it'll show all the boats of the world, and many more links for you to check into. Uh, so check out the Earth Explorer for all the additional maps that are really, really cool that I've found. If you find a map that you'd like to see added to Climate Viewer 3D at the very top is a submit a map by email link. Just click that to email me. Um, we have donate. You can support this free project on Patreon, PayPal, or GoFundMe. I'd greatly appreciate that. There is a site map which shows everything on the um, entire website. The two main maps, the about page, my reading map, which is George Stiller. He does the historical section and then all of the different sections of the website. So if you click on the main category alerts and weather, it'll show you a complete listing of all of the different map pages. All of the stuff that's available on here, the open source software I use is listed here and every single one of these individual map pages if you click on them and you go to say the heart page 
it's going to show not only the the harp information but below is sharing comments and then all of the related maps uh, to it are listed as well so that is the brand new climate viewer website um, at climateviewer.org i hope that you guys will share this i hope you guys will give it a try because i put a lot of work into it seven years worth of uh, maps and research on here so far and it just doesn't get any sexier than a, a cool 3D globe. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you guys uh, find it informative. Please leave me your comments and suggestions.